Hi everyone, welcome back to my tutorials on Deep Sky Lucky Imaging. In the last tutorial we captured a whole bunch of Lucky Imaging data with my C14 using SharpCap. Now before we invest a lot of time to stack and process all the data, I want to evaluate the quality of the data. I'm especially interested if the FWHM filter actually worked correctly. So did we only capture subs that had an FWHM value of 1.5 arc seconds or below? Okay, so I opened PixInsight where I want to evaluate some of my lucky imaging data. I also moved the data from my imaging laptop to my desktop computer, which is a little bit faster for processing. So I have here the um, live stacking result. So we captured 16,047 frames, which sum up to a total integration time of 4,012 seconds. So we will take a look at we will take a look at this result in the next tutorial. Then I also captured a dark frame. I'm not sure if this is really necessary, but I will apply it anyway. And then I have a folder with some of the raw data, which represents the whole data set. So these are only 32 of the 16,000 subs that I've captured. But I want to get an idea how good the quality is and how the quality is variating uh, over the course of two hours. So we have seen in the last tutorial that the seeing conditions at some points deteriorated quite significantly and we could capture only a few frames. And then we had periods with really good seeing conditions where we were able to capture a lot of subs. So let's evaluate the quality of these subs. So first I will open the first sub in PixInsight and apply an auto stretch. And for me, it's always amazing that you have a really, really, really noisy sub. That's not really surprising because we have used only an exposure time of 250 milliseconds. So you can distinguish here some stars and they seem to be more or less round, even at the edges. Uh, at the edges, okay, a little bit elongated, but here it seemed to be fine. And in the center, we see the core of M106. So that could be quite useful data. And now we want to evaluate the data, and I will use the subframe selector to estimate the FWHM values. Before I do that, I want to count the stars that are visible in the sub here. So we have one, two, three, four, maybe five really bright stars. And then we have a few fainter stars. So um, we have about five stars that should be detectable and everything else is noise. So um, you can see here there's a lot of noise in the sub. Again, not really surprising due to the high gain settings and the low exposure times. So let's close this and open the subframe selector. Now I'm adding all the subs that I have selected here. So the 32 out of the 16,000 subs, sharp cap, M106. And I take all the files. Then I have to define here the subframe scale, which is simply the pixel scale that we also computed in the last tutorial using this astronomy.tools homepage. And first, I only want to evaluate the quality of the first sub. So I select all. Um, toggle all the selected and then only choose the first one. And so let's evaluate 
the quality of the first sub. Take some time. So I'm especially interested in the FWHM value. So here you can see, wow, really amazing. So we have a FWHM value of 0 0.29. So we almost have the quality of the Hubble Space Telescope. Now you might think that can't be really correct because the FWHM filter that we fine-tuned was about one and a half arc seconds FWHM. So what's going wrong here? If you take a look at the stars that are detected, you can see we have detected 25,583 stars. And as we counted before in the sub, there are only five dominant stars that should be detected. So there's obviously something wrong with the star detection. So what's actually happening is some of the noise is detected as stars. And that's the reason why the number of detected stars is so high. And because the noise is restricted to a few pixels, we get these really small estimation for the FWHM value. So we have to fine-tune the star detection until we get about five stars. Then we might get a realistic FWHM value. So we go here to the star detector parameters and I already played around with these parameters. So let's see what we can fine-tune. So first of all we define the noise layers. So we assume that the first two layers are actually only containing noise. Then I'm applying the maximum amount of noise reduction. So in this case it's 20. Then you have to turn down the sensitivity. So let's try 0 0.1. And also really important, you have to um, adjust this bright um, threshold over here. So that's far too small. I set it to 40. Maybe a smaller value would also work, but let's try this. So let's apply subframe selector again to the first sub. And let's see how the FWHM value and the star detection does now change. And voila, we have now five stars detected. FWHM is 1.3, so that's perfect. It fulfills the criterion that we have set in sharp cap that we want to have a threshold at 1.5 arc seconds. And the eccentricity is also not too bad. So 0 0.59 is acceptable, I would say. Especially because the elongated stars were mostly in the corners and we have dithered a lot, so we will cut them out anyway. So they will not have an influence on the final stacking result. So that's really promising. Now in the next step I want to evaluate all the subs that I have captured here. So all the 32 subs that are representing all the data over the course of two hours. So how does the FWHM value change over the course of these two hours? And did we still fulfill this uh, threshold of 1.5 arc seconds for the FWHM? So I toggle selected and I select all and toggle selected again. And now we selected all the subs and let the subframe selector do its work again with these optimized star detector parameters. And that will take some time. So I see you in a few seconds. And we are finished. So let's take a look first at the variation of the detected stars. Okay, so either five or four stars are detected. So that seemed to work quite nicely. 
Now let's take a look how the FWHM value is variating. And perfect, as you can see, we had a threshold of 1.5 arc seconds. And at least for this bunch of subs, the criterion was obviously fulfilled. So we have no subs that are above 1.5 arc seconds. But what's really interesting is that we have some subs that are here close to one arc second, which is quite amazing. So maybe I have to do two types of stacks. First one stack for all the subs below 1.5 arc seconds FWHM, and then another stack for all the data below one arc second, even though there might be not that many frames that fulfill this criterion. But we will see. So I will apply this to all the data in the next tutorial. And then we trying to stack for 1.5 arc seconds and 1 arc second. Let's compare the images for the worst stack and the best stack to see if this is really reasonable. So we have here the worst is 1.457 arc seconds. So let's take a look at this image. So that's the sub for 1.457. Let's move the subframe selector out of the way. Yeah, so this is the worst sub. Even in the corners, the stars are not too elongated. And obviously we are now pixel peeping, so <laughs> 2 to 1, 3 to 1. Yeah, so this is the worst sub in this series of subs. But it's actually not too bad, I would say. What's going on here in the corner below? Ah, not too bad. And then we take a look at the best sub. It should be here 0 0.936. Let's compare that. So let's take this star over here, for example. So this is below an arc second, at least based on these measurements. And that is um, 1.45 something arc seconds. We can a little bit smaller so we can easier compare that. Yeah, so visually it appears to be a little bit smaller, but I'm not sure if it's really below one arc second. What was the eccentricity? 0 0.623. Yeah, that will be really interesting if we separately stack all the data below 1.5 arc seconds and all the data at or below one arc second. So even if we can stack only a few frames, we get a better signal to noise ratio and can do a much better uh, FWHM evaluation. So it will be really interesting to do that. But overall, the data quality seem to be quite impressive. Unfortunately, we had this issue with the almost full moon. So <laughs> the resolution is good, but um, yeah, we have a lot of gradients and noise due to the moon. And here you can also see that there is a significant amount of dithering applied. So this was sub number 2994. And here we have sub 11447. And as you can see, I did that quite significantly. So fixed pattern noise should not be really an issue. Yeah, that's really amazing. Okay, so we will see what happens when we stack the data. However, that will be the topic of the next tutorials. So I will stack the data in different ways using different 
software, so for example Autostacker or Serial or PixInsight. And then we will compare the different stacking results to evaluate which is actually the best quality. And in the later tutorials, I will also show you how to process the stacked data. But for now, I want to finish this tutorial. I thank you for your attention and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.